had first demonstrated in a laboratory that we can put this absorber uh, under vacuum. This absorber is a piece of uh, aluminum or copper coated with a uh, uh, light absorbing material. And uh, when we put in vacuum and put a small amount of thermoelectric material together, we can generate uh, about 45% efficiency, conversion efficiency into electricity. This efficiency itself compared to photovoltaic uh, is actually about a factor of two to four lower, depends on which technology you're comparing. So from efficiency perspective, this is uh, lower than photovoltaic. Uh, on the other hand, from the material usage perspective, we, because we are using uh, metal uh, rather than semiconductor as an absorber, and the, the amount of the thermoelectric material we use is very small. So the, at the end, the, the electricity cost was very attractive. And furthermore, so this is what we did uh, in terms of concept, uh, the experiment, the lab. But in the real world, we say, okay, this is still not going to be good enough. On the other hand, we know that uh, in many countries, particularly developing countries like China, or you go to Middle East, uh, uh, you go to Israel, and uh, uh, they use a lot of solar hot water systems. And those solar hot water in China, is, uh, there are over 100 million square meter deployment already. So when we combine in with this hot water system, the economics become very attractive because we can generate both electricity and hot water, supply hot water. So this were uh, the motivation from a commercial standpoint of view. On the longer side, what we're doing is actually store heat. We have project with the DOE storing the heat and we want to double the efficiency of this, achieve over 10%, and store the heat so that we can supply electricity during night. So during the day, we heat up the object. We store not as a battery, but as a heat. And during night, we convert it into electricity. So this will, could provide uh, um, an alternative to the current solar thermomechanical which actually uses heat storage. Uh, but the, because of the solar thermomechanical uh, power plants, they have to use very large mechanical engines. Now we can do whole household, so that, that provides uh, the advantage of both solid state, like a photovoltaic, and the heat storage. So this uh, are the attraction for us. Heat storage, uh, the challenge, uh, again, is uh, cost, size, and the temperature range. And uh, uh, currently, we are developing uh, heat storage media so you can work over 600 degrees Celsius. Because the higher the temperature we store the heat, uh, the more uh, higher efficiency we can convert into electricity later on. And uh, uh, nano, uh, uh, we, in fact, uh, we had uh, been thinking a lot in terms of nano, uh, but say at this stage, it's not completely clear uh, whether nano can help the thermal storage. Uh, we are uh, trying to understand because there are interfacial energy and whether that could be helpful. It's now a uh, uh, clear answer.